This video is going to be the first in a series of videos on using Power Automate and Power Apps uh, for paginated report subscriptions. Uh, I've been helping some customers in this space lately and showed them some of what's possible uh, and thought I'd make some videos to, to share some of that in case it's useful to others. Um, here I have a simple paginated report, very simple. Um, and in a vast majority of the cases, the, the native service experience of subscriptions uh, meet, meet the needs. You've got this one that's been here for a while, the standard subscription where report consumers can come and set up their own subscriptions. And that works great. Um, or there's the new feature that's in preview called dynamic um, subscriptions. Um, you can see the blog about that from back in August. Uh, also, the documentation site has a lot, lot more details about that. But it's a, it's a great experience for when an in individual person needs to distribute a high number of reports um, out to others. Um, now, the people I've been helping had a little bit different scenario. And so I use Power Automate and Power Apps to uh, provide some additional functionality um, and also help where um, they had a scenario where they had individuals that they wanted to manage subscriptions once they were set up by report consumers, but they didn't want to give uh, workspace admin permission to those individuals. And so we went down this path. Um, and again, I hope this is, this is useful to others. Um, using Power Automate for paginated report subscriptions is, is nothing new. There's a bunch of great content out there. A um, couple examples. Uh, Patrick from Gyna Cube has, has this one. Um, Dan English also has a nice uh, blog out there for using uh, Power Automate uh, for that. Um, just a real um, quick example um, before I get into the more detailed example. You know, say I needed to burst a bunch of reports out there uh, for, for a bunch of stores. This is a SharePoint list uh, that has uh, 300 stores for some company. Um, it's got the, the city that it's in and then the emails. Normally this would be to different people, but I'm just demoing here. So they all go to me. Uh, and then you would have a Power Automate flow very much like this where um, you would trigger it. You could put it on some recurrence if you wanted to. This one is currently set up to manually trigger. You'd go get um, all the items from that list. In this case, all 300 row, uh, items from that table. And then you'd iterate through that. And then for each one, you would uh, pass the, the value of the current city. So that we passed as a, as a filter parameter to the, to the report. And then you would just email that out to the email from that row. Uh, you, you could dynamically set the title with the name of the city. Um, and then, um, you could also then attach the file, um, as shown here. Right. And that works great. Um, one other point here is to take advantage of parallelism where you can use the concurrency control on the apply to each. This is a really small, simple report. So I can crank this up to 50, um, so that the burst of reports is done much sooner. Right. So, so that works great. Um, but one of the customers I was helping uh, needed a, a little bit more advanced solution, um, had multi value parameters. Again, they wanted customers to be able to um, set up their own subscriptions. And so I made a little bit more uh, advanced report here. This is a report that has two parameters and both of them are multi value. So that increases the complexity a little bit. Still a very not pretty basic report. Um, but it's really the, the parameters part that, that makes it challenging uh, for this kind of a scenario. And so this is just showing uh, a SharePoint list um, to just give you some ideas of how you can um, provide this kind of functionality uh, to, to report consumers. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show a Power App solution that actually lets uh, gives a single user interface to handle uh, subscriptions to multiple reports through a single interface. Um, this is just going against a, a single report. So in this case, again, you could put a power app on top of this. You could let consumers come straight to this interface. But basically the key I wanted to show here was uh, how I'm storing the information. And then I'll show you with the flow how I translate that into um, the report parameters uh, to pass in as well as when to 
send the report from a subscription standpoint. Um, so again, uh, the subscriber comes, they've got some description or name they can give to their um, subscription that's not used any further. Um, there's the two multi-value parameters. In my case, I decided to concatenate multiple parameters with a double hashtag, um, but you could do, do any approach you want. You could encode it however you want. And then for the subscription itself, I have two columns here, the, the days uh, that the report should run and the hours uh, of the day that it should run. And so basically I'm just doing um, a text string with the, the days of the week it should run and a text string of the hours that it should run. And so basically I'll show in the flow, it uses this information uh, whenever the flow runs to decide uh, which, which rows of this should be, um, should be iterated over and, and reports generated. Okay, um, so again, just showing, showing a basic technique for how this could be done. If we look at the flow, and if I edit it here just to show you how, how I use that information to distribute the reports, in this case, um, this report runs every hour. And the first thing it does is I have a, a parse JSON step here where I basically just store at the time the flow is running the current day, right? So I'm just formatting date time UTC now uh, and given the, the, the format uh, string there, the DDD, and then the same thing for the hour, but doing the double capital H here to get um, the two, um, you know, 06 for, for 6 a.m., for example. Okay. And then that information is used uh, when I go to get items uh, in a filter. And so I'm doing the OData filter query here. So this will um, filter the, the request to get items from SharePoint. And both of these conditions need to be met that the, the, day, the string in the days column has to include the current day at the time this flow is running. And it also has to include this hour, right? So any rows that uh, are not included there uh, obviously are, are, are omitted. If you go back to the list, I had this one here that has all the days and all the hours. And I set this up just for testing so that every time I run this flow, I'd at least have one row uh, that would run um, to confirm that it's working, right? So that filters it down to just the, the subscriptions that are relevant for this day and this hour. And then I have the apply to each year. And that's where I start to parse out those uh, parameter values. And there's really, um, there's two parameters. So this, these two are for one of them and these two is for the other, and then I put it together. So in this case, I'm basically splitting that string and I told you I had the double hashtag there. So I create an array of um, city names for this one. And then the next thing I do is I use the select uh, operation and the way you need to pass parameter information into the export to file perpetual report step is it needs this name value syntax. So I'm creating a name value array um, for each city. And I'll show you an executed run to show you what that looks like. And then I basically do the same exact thing in these next two steps where I'm splitting um, the category at the double hashtags and then creating the the name value uh, array of those values again. And then since those two are in the same format, I then put those two arrays together and I just union them together uh, to get the full name value array that, that is used for in the paginated report, right? So in this case, um, this is iterating off of this list, which are subscriptions to a single report. I'll show you multi-report in the next video, um, but this one, uh, is very simple. You, you set the workspace and report, the format, uh, and then we just pass in that array from the union step, and that is the name values. Uh, from there, it renders the report. Um, you could attach it to an email directly. In this case, I chose to create a file in a SharePoint library. Um, so storing the file there, putting the body uh, from the export step there, dynamically naming it. Um, then using this action here to create a link to that file so that I could then email it to the report subscriber uh, with some information about um, the report uh, parameters that were used uh, and, and of course the link um, to, the, to the file. 
Um, if I go back and look at one of these executed runs, just to show you what this looks like in the steps, um, you know, the get items is, is just nothing really to see there. Um, the apply to each is, is where it's a little interesting. So in this, um, this, it, you know, the input row is, um, well, this is, it's already parsed out the double hashtag. And then if we use the, in the select step here, it's then turning this into the name value uh, syntax JSON that's needed to pass in for uh, the report parameter. So store city and is the name of the parameter. And then it has the two values here. Um, same thing, it creates the same, this time it's the categories parameter and then the two different values here. And then those two arrays are put together, uh, categories and store city. So we have a single array that has all of those four parameter values in it. That's passed to the report and then the rest is straightforward. Uh, and then if we just look what the output of that is, um, you, you get an email like this, uh, you have a link to your subscription. This would go to each person. Um, you've got the, the name of the report. You've got the two parameters and the values that were in there, and then the link to the file on SharePoint. Okay. All right. So that's just uh, a few tips there on, you know, how to build a custom subscription solution with multi-value parameters. There's lots of other ways you could probably do this. Um, I kind of like this approach here with the hour recurrence and, you know, setting the day in the, uh, in the hour of the day that the report should run. Um, and then how to uh, do the multi-value parameters, the syntax that you need um, to pass to uh, the report. So hopefully this is uh, helpful to you. Um, stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to show our Power Automate and Power App solution that actually handles subscriptions to multiple reports at once.